what is going on guys so i've got a very special collab video for you guys today going to talk about 68 charlie with mr robbie boyd over here thank you for having me on the channel All right, so to give you guys a little bit of context, so Robbie Boyd, he is now out of the army, but he did make it through like literally the entire 68 Charlie AIT, so he's the best person I know to talk about the subject. So he's basically gonna go and take the reins on this and talk about kind of from start to finish 68 Charlie, what is 68 or 68 Charlie, and then kind of talk about his experience going through AIT. All right, guys, so. You might be asking, well, what is 68 Charlie? 68 Charlie is a practical nursing specialist, so you're essentially a nurse. So your jobs when it comes to the actual field are administration of medicine, uh, cleaning wounds, doing like, if you look up what a nurse does, you do all of that, except now you're in the army. And the only difference is that when you're out in the field, you might have a little bit more responsibility, but uh, that's under the table. Okay, so one of the things that I'm curious about that a lot of people ask me with different MOSs in the army is, do you have to have experience like in nursing? Like, do you have to have like a CNA or do you have to have some kind of nursing degree to kind of excel and pass AIT? Or is it one of those things that, like I think most MOSs where they teach you like you don't know anything? So it's, it's very much like the latter. And um, so I had previously, I've done like one and a half semesters of college. I've gone through high school uh, and I just generally focused on anatomy and physiology because those were my interests at the time. And when you go into the 68 Charlie course, it's a lot of revision with basic biology, basic anatomy, basic physiology, understanding the human bodily processes. And it's pretty much your basic college or high school course of anatomy, physiology, biology. And then you start going over some basic math when it comes to prescription, which is like, it's not hard. Those are always easy passes. And then um, after that, you start going over nursing uh, interventions and sort of like your role as a nurse. Uh, so I always did very well when it came to physiology, anatomy, because I just had a lot of um, a lot of past experience with those topics. But a lot of it is we're going to teach you like you know nothing. So we actually yeah. had some people that were already nurses in the civilian sector, and then they just did this because they wanted to get military. For them, they went through the course just fine. For me, I had no real experience as a nurse, and I had no real experience when it came to education. Uh, and when it came to any sort of degrees, I was pretty much straight out of high school, straight out of high school, joined the army to be a 68 Charlie. So you start off at, you start off in San Antonio at uh, BAMC, which is Brooke Army Medical Center. And then phase one is going to be, so there's two phases. There's phase one and there's phase two. Not to be confused with the fact that there are three phases within phase like the one privileges phase. the privilege phases so there's yeah. phase four phase five and phase six is way too much to ask so it's phase five plus <laughs> um, <I know>. like, <laughs> why did they see that i don't know it makes zero sense so anyway in phase one you have those privilege phases but in phase one you are in 50 man dorms it, it is not like two man dorms you don't actually have dorms it's 50 man based 50 man barracks that was like terrible i was so disappointed when i saw that uh. but so, so, so one of the things like, so if you go 68 Charlie, is this a just, just your barracks thing that had 50 people? Or no, it's all, it's all, 68. all 68 okay. Charlie goes to San Antonio for phase one. doesn't matter who you are. doesn't matter anything. Okay. First for, uh, for phase Good one, <laughs> it's always a Brook Army Medical Center, uh, in those bays. 68 whiskeys actually get dorms right off the bat. Okay. Which I, th I thought we would be totally opposite, but no, 68 Charlie, you're just thrown right back into basic essentially. No, you're not. <laughs> um, from there, you have morning PT, just like always. You usually do, I think, four times a week. You skip Wednesdays. Um, it depends on the leadership at the time. I would have to say that the platoon sergeants that I had in phase one were the best that I ever had. Yeah. They were, they really cared and they were, they were super qualified. How long is phase one? Phase one is going to be about four months, about 16 weeks. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in this 50 room, 50 yep. person. Gosh. Yeah. And then there's, there's, if you want, you can get mail, uh, which is an important question. You can always get mail, but you have to go to mail call and then you have to be standing in a line of 50 people and they call out your name and then they inspect your package. Um, you have toes online. So every single night at a certain time, you have to be on the line. You have to have everything cleaned up. I never had anything cleaned up and somehow I never got caught. Everyone, it was eventually a game to see how messy my bed could be <laughs> uh, until someone would actually call me out and they never did. So that was pretty funny. So you have four months of phase one, you have those privileges and stuff. So once you're in privileges of phase five and phase five plus, you start going off base. At phase five, you can go off base wearing your dress blues and you can, you have like a 200 mile parameter 
so that at any time, if they're like, you need to be back here, then you can just be back within that allotted time. But for the most part, you want to stay pretty close to base. In Phase 5+, Plus, you're allowed to go off base with civilian clothes on. A lot of times, some soldiers will decide to do things that are not allowed or partake in events that should not be partaken in <laughs> when you're in training. One of the biggest rules in AIT is you're not allowed to consume alcohol because when mm -hmm. you're training, you're supposed to be always ready like a true ranger, soldier, hua. Uh, so you're not allowed to drink alcohol. Obviously, you're not allowed to do drugs, but um, we actually did have some incidences where that happened and uh, lots, of, lots of disciplines were taking place. And actually for, for two months of my phase one, mm -hmm. we weren't even allowed to do anything. Like I couldn't go because to the gym. Because somebody got in I wasn't allowed to go to the gym. Really? Yeah. So I would just work out. Uh, luckily, I'm, I'm, so there's something called the CTA. I have no idea what it stands for. Company training area. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so on the company training area, there was like a pull-up bar and they had tires that you can flip and a few weights and stuff. So you can still work out on the CTA, but um, as far as privileges go, in, until you're in phase five plus, can you really start going around wherever you want? Mm -hmm. In closing, for phase one, it's gonna be your basics when it comes to biology, physiology, anatomy. You're gonna be going over basic nursing interventions such as like administration of medicine or being able to tend to wounds. It's gonna be pretty much just a broad overview of what your responsibilities are going to be as a nurse and then in phase two you're going to start really diving into those topics so for phase two uh, you pretty much start back at square one except now instead of going over about 15 percent or 20 percent of like the general information mm -hmm. you're going over 90 percent even a hundred percent sometimes <laughs> So you start off like let's say you go over the skin, but now you gotta you gotta memorize like every single la layer of the skin. Uh, mm -hmm. When it comes to burns, what layers are affected in what way, and then you start getting like really nitty gritty when it comes to the topic. So phase two is where people really start dropping out like flies. Um, okay. And if you guys didn't know, 68 Charlie has a 60% fail rate in total. So only 40% of the people that have joined actually make it to the end of the 53 weeks. And in phase two, that's where a majority of people start dropping out, including myself, haha. -ha. Uh, on the last test. On the very last <laughs> test, let's get it. So, so it's such a freaking, like, that's so annoying. But anyway, so phase two, you start getting a lot more in depth with all of the same topics that you covered in phase one. Uh, but now there's a lot more emphasis on medications, which got me. Medications are what got me. I never got med medication questions right on the test, mm. but they would only ask like, five, maybe eight medication questions. So I would just be like, it's okay, I'll get an 88 rather than a 100%. So I always took those risks because I wanted to focus on my strengths, which was anatomy, physiology, and basic human function. I really understood that. Yeah. So if I, as long, as long as you understand the way that the body works, then this is how you can pass 68 Charlie. Understand how the body works, understand what goes wrong with it, and figure out how you can get it back to working. I know that seems very broad, mm -hmm. but let's say that you have someone that got burned. Okay, well, the skin is supposed to protect you from all this and all that. So what happened when they got burned? Well, they no longer can protect against infection. They no longer can thermoregulate. How do you get them back to that? You start with meshes, you start with uh, wet to dry bandages, and then you have to do all this stuff. So figure out how you can get back to square one. That's, yeah. That is valuable. Find out how things work. What happens when they go wrong? How do you get back to them working? It's a very general way to look at it but that is how you will pass and also you should probably look at medications because <laughs> medications are important they're very hard and a lot of it really just comes down to like memorization a lot of it is and it's not really good to say that you always want to say it's all about the critical thinking it's all about mm -hmm. how you can apply yourself and it's very important but you really for the test you really need to memorize some things so yeah. for the first two months of phase two it's a lot like phase one in the fact that you have daily PT every morning and you just go to class. But after that, it then switches over and you would generally do two days of classroom time and then you'll have three days of working in the actual hospital. And that's when you're gonna be directly under an RN, an officer, or possibly an LPN that was already in the course. So that was my favorite, mm -hmm. my absolute favorite. Because I remember day one, I walked in and, because you've already learned all the basics. You've learned it, but the thing is you haven't done it. You've, mm -hmm. you've learned it in a book and on paper. And as soon as someone was like, hey, can you grab some vitals? Which is the most basic thing that you will ever do in nursing, <laughs> grabbing vitals. Someone was like, hey, grab the vitals. And I was like, I don't know how. <laughs> and they were like, you just put the blood pressure cuff around them and then you read the monitor. And I was like, I don't know, like, I don't know. <laughs> and I, I was panicking. So eventually you start 
you start going to the hospital a lot more and then you'll start getting a lot more comfortable. And hopefully what usually happens is your nurse, the person that's over you will be like, hey, go give them an IV. Mm -hmm. And they'll just watch you do it. And then they'll just let you take control. As long as they're supervising, then they just let you take control. So it's really, they throw you into the deep end of the pool and you figure out how to swim. And that's what I love. I love learning that way. Cause then everything's on me if I mess yeah. up. And that's, 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 in my opinion, the best way to learn. To just be thrown into it and see what happens. So when you're in the hospital, you go through all the floors. Not okay. like all of them, but you generally go through almost every single floor in the hospital. So that goes from the ICU, intensive care unit, uh, to OB, which is mother baby. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what we call it, the mother baby floor, which is pretty much um, pain control. Uh, other floors, uh, I've been on the burn floor which was very interesting because I walked into the patient's room at 7 a.m. and I didn't walk out until 11 a.m. So I was in there for four hours straight. Okay. <laughs> just redressing. It's, it's, it's rough on the burn floor. Uh, ICU floors are very uh, intense when it comes to patient care, but you only have one patient. So you just have one thing to focus on a lot. Okay. If that makes sense. But yeah. on, on, uh, on other floors that are less intense, so someone that comes in with the flu, someone that comes in with a broken bone. At, when you're on those floors, you can have upwards of three to four patients that you have to take care of. And that means that you have to also be on time with all their medications, which you only have a 30 minute window on each side. So yeah. then what real, one thing that they're gonna drill into you as soon as you get into phase two is time management. And they, you first apply this with studying and being able to do army stuff while still learning and passing all the tests. But then when you're in the hospital, it's being able to administer all these different medications, being able to take care of all your patients in a timely manner and still like being able, because you have to chart everything. You have to type, type, type everything that you do. I, PFC Boyd, walked into the patient's room at 7.47 a.m., said, how are you doing this morning? They said this, I applied this, I gave them the early morning medication, and then you have to say like Thank bed you. in locked and closed position and do all this like safety checks and then say like end note, and that's one note. And if you have four patients, then the most, time, cons <laughs> the most time consuming thing is writing down, because it's all very legal. Because mm -hmm. obviously when you're taking care of a human life, there's a lot of things that could possibly go wrong, so you have to make sure, <laughs> the hospital has to make sure that you do everything right to protect against any sort of lawsuits or anything like that. Especially yeah. since you're a student, it's not you that will get in trouble, it's the person above you. So that's very important. You have to make sure that you are on time. That's another thing that we talked about on my podcast, which you guys can go check out, link will be in the description. <laughs> For one of the main things that comes to nursing is attention to detail. Because you could misadminister a med. You're supposed to give it to okay. them orally, but you gave it to them in a pill rather than liquid form or something like that. And those can really, actually change the outcome of the patient's recovery. So like I was saying, phase two, it now is going to be testing you in time management. It's gonna see, can you be a nurse? Can you be under stress and work in these environments on top of going to school, on top of having to do PT, on top of having to do army stuff, on top of trying to have an okay social life. And usually people just throw that out the window, at least I did. I know that if you pay attention in class and if you find some online resources in order to help solidify that information, then you are going to succeed. And really, if you are just joining the, the nursing program because you don't wanna be in the fight, that's not really true because even our platoon leaders or our, um, or our what's the other word? Sergeant. Platoon sergeant? Yeah. <laughs> Even our platoon sergeants had tell, told us stories about how when they were 68 Charlies, they had been in gunfights before. And when you ever, whenever you have to go from point A to point B, you are in danger. And that's something. And so you still, on top of all this nursing training, you still need to maintain your army training. You still mm -hmm. go to the range. You still do ruck marches. So you still have to maintain all those other skills that were drilled into you in basic training. Yeah. And upkeep them all right so we've basically covered the day-to-day -day, what you do in phase one phase two and then of the phase four phase five and five phase five plus which i've talked about plenty of times on the different privileges and stuff but as far as tips for people going you talked about you know that three thing way to look at it but do you have any other tips or for people who are aspiring to be a 68 charlie like what should they think about before going as like a tip like should you actually um, try to study up on some things before going or, or what? So um, this is what I did just as a sort of refresher. Before I had I had enlisted and before I actually went into training, I just pretty much went onto like Quizlet or went on the internet and read up some articles. I even like brushed up on some old notes that I had from high school of just basic anatomy and physiology. Because if you understand the basics 
then you can build off of it. So it's like anything with knowledge, with fitness, with your career, with everything, it's kind of like trying, the higher it get, the higher your sand pile gets, the more successful you become in whatever you're trying to do. But the thing is, the higher you want to get, the wider your base needs to be. Because you, as much as sand as you pile onto that pile, it's just gonna get wider and wider and wider before it actually gets taller. Mm -hmm. So as long as you can have the greatest basic understanding of human anatomy, physiology, and nursing interventions, then you can eventually deduct and reason to the correct answer on the test and eventually to be successful in this career. So I think that as long as you understand the basics in a very fundamental way and you really get it, like ins and outs, then you can eventually solve almost any issue that comes your way as long as you just resort to the basics. All right, so that's basically gonna be it for this video on 68 Charlie, but before we go, you guys definitely need to check out my man Robbie Board over here. So like talk just shortly about, you know, what you're doing now on YouTube. So uh, I was actually given the option. Uh, what happened is I failed the very last test of 68 Charlie. So they were like, hey, we can either have you reclass to the needs of the army or you can go and go back to being a civilian. So I took a leap of faith and became a civilian. So now, my YouTube channel is about me documenting my journey to becoming successful as a full-time videographer. So I've got my own camera set up, I brought all my equipment here today, and my channel now revolves around me trying to find clients, trying to survive and make it off of as little money as possible, just trying to survive really and get my career started, and also giving some tips and advice when it comes to anything camera related. So if you guys are interested in that, Links are gonna be down below, check me out, and uh, thank you guys for watching. For sure, I've literally watched his videos for tips myself because he's way better at this camera stuff than than I am. So you guys should definitely check him out. You also have some videos on the Army too, some of the old yes. ones when you were yeah, in. Yeah, they're much older, filmed with potato. <laughs> and uh, if you guys would like, I have a lot of very detailed 68 Charlie videos as well as basic training videos. So those are also on my channel, which are in the Army playlist that I have. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I definitely had a really good time, but if you guys are not following me on Instagram, Snapchat, social media links are hopefully right here. I'm not sure how the camera is set up, but I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will see you later. Drop.